given any complex number in polar form, the Morris states that if we raise that complex number to the nth power, what do I get? What do I get? What happens to the modulus? <laughs> okay, so because we're multiplying mods, if you're multiplying z by itself n times, you'll multiply the modulus by itself n times. Okay, that's that part. What happens to the arguments? N theta, of, um, n very good. n theta here and n theta here as well. Okay, because we're multiplying mods, but we're adding arguments. So far, so good. All right, and we'll say this is by Demarcus. Now. Do we need to quote this when we do Which is why I'm writing it. Now, when you can see we're going down in this direction, right? The modulus theorem gives you powers. Gives you powers, like raise to the power of 2, 3, 4, 5, or even negative numbers. That's fine. That's division, right? But complex roots, roots is about going in the opposite direction, right? If I say square root or cube root or fourth root or whatever, right? It's instead of multiplying, it's by having division, right? So if I go backwards, Wow. Why not? Okay. Um, let's think about what we would guess to be the case if instead of having the, the nth power of z, what if I had the nth root of z? What would you guess that De Marais theorem would kind of like generalize to in this case? It's it. Z to the power. Okay. So that's just yeah. That's just the index form, right? So here. Because in index form, this is z to the power of 1 over n, everywhere I have n in here, I can replace it with 1 over n up here. Right? Is that okay? So I'm going to write that out just at the front because r to the power of 1 over n is just the nth root of r. Right? What about the arguments? What happens? We multiply mods, we should add arguments, so the opposite is division, right? So I'm going to get this. Okay, now this is fine, this is true, <coughs> excuse me, there's nothing wrong on the board, it's just that it's not complete, right? So you know when we talk about, oh right, uh, what's the square root of 25, right? And the square root of 25 is? 5. 5. But 25 has two numbers which are equally square roots. They're not the square root, but they're both numbers you can square that will give you 25, right? So of course the equation that would give you those two solutions is x squared equals 25. We know this is two answers, right? Whoops. So plus or minus 5 are both square roots of 25, right? But 5 is the square root. If you remember when we were talking about um, in the complex plane, we talked about defining a number based on its modulus and its argument. And we said, okay, if I have a number over here, okay, 1 plus i or something like that. I could say its argument is pi on 4, but that's not the only argument I could use, right? Like, give me an example. What's another argument I could put on there? If I add multiples of, like this is pi on 4, and if I go that angle and then add another 2 pi, what's pi on 4 plus 2 pi? 2 plus pi is uh, uh, 2 pi is 8 pi on 4, right? 2 pi is 8 pi on 4, so when you add it to that pi on 4, you'll get... 9 pi on 4, okay? So we have this non-unique representation, okay? So just like I have a principal argument, I also have a principal square root, right? There's one which I consider like the main one, okay? Even though there are others sort of hanging around on the side, okay? But when we look at complex numbers, things open up a lot more than this, right? Uh, a number has two square roots. What about if I asked you for, how about this? So this is just the same number, right? How many cube roots are there of 125? Three. There's one. One. There's one. <coughs> now, interestingly, oh, we would <coughs> excuse me. In the real number world, in the real number world, I would say there's only one solution, right? There's only one solution. But we know in the complex world, we find more. Okay. So to help unpack this, I'm going to show you an actual example. Let's find. Here's example one. Let's find the cube root, because that's, that's the one where, that's the first time we're encountering, you know, this issue of, well, how many roots are there? Let's find just the cube root of a nice, simple, complex number, like, say, a simple, complex number. Like, say, one, okay? Uh, find the cube roots, and you'll notice I am saying, plural, okay, of one, okay? Now, just a little side note, <coughs> excuse me, the number one's an important number, right? 
uh, just like it's an important number gives a unit circle and that kind of thing. So in the context of complex numbers, we give it another name, just like zero has the name origin, we call one unity, as in unit, as in one, okay? So what we're finding right now are the cube roots of unity, and I could find the square roots of unity and the um, fourth roots of unity, I can find whichever ones I like. So what I'm gonna do, is rather than go appeal to this, which I know will only give me one answer, by definition, if you've got some theta, you divide it by three, right? You're only gonna get one number, okay? Instead, I'm gonna use the proper DeMars theorem, right? This guy here. So what that means is I can solve this equation, the cube roots of one, if I cube them, I should get one. Do you agree with that? So in other words, I'm solving this equation. You okay with that? <coughs> 